Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's Grace and today the video that I'm going to be doing is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag um, because we are approaching the middle of the year which is absolutely crazy. Um, I have read 34 books so far this year and I do have like some currently on the go but um, we're just going to talk about books that I have actually finished in this tag. So now, let's get right on into it. The first question in the tag is the best book that you've read so far this year. And so I have four books for this, but it's I'm going to sort of smush it into three because um, the first two that I was going to mention are The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, and I read them both at pretty much right at the beginning of this year, um, and I loved them so much. They were both fantastic. Um, I may have enjoyed The Well of Ascension a little bit more, actually, but I just have to acknowledge the Hero of Ages being on the same level because of the fantastic ending to the trilogy, um, and I cannot wait to reread those books. I loved them so much. The third one that I want to mention is Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch, which I read in February. Um, so I read The Lies of Locke Lamora last year, and that was one of my favorite books of last year, um, and the second book did not disappoint me. The essence of the book, like, stayed the same. What I loved about it stayed the same. You have, like, your heist, you have your really smart main characters, really witty. His prose is, like, has this undercurrent of entertainment and he is really witty. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like the second book as much as the first and I think that they're pretty much equal in my mind. I loved both of them so much and I have not read The Republic of Thieves yet but part of that is just my putting off the fact that that's the last book that's currently published in that series um, and I'm afraid to read it because I love it so much and I know that I'm gonna want the fourth book and I don't know when it's coming out so that's that finally a book that I have actually talked about extensively on the channel because it was a very recent read that is going to be The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan so obviously that comes with having read the other three Wheel of Time books before that since The Shadow Rising is number four but um, even having really enjoyed all four of those books The Shadow Rising has been my favorite so far um, so in my favorite books of the year so far, we have some pretty heavy hitters represented, Mistborn, uh, The Gentleman Bastards, and The Wheel of Time, but I couldn't pick between those because they have all been so fantastic and I'm so glad that I've read them this year. Okay, the second question in the tag is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to. The first one is going to be Blood Like Magic by Lasalle Sambury. And this book just sounds so interesting. Um, it doesn't actually come out until June 15th officially, which might be around the time that you're seeing this video. But for some reason, when I pre-order books from Indigo, they like to send them to me a little bit early, which I'm not complaining about. But just because of the readathon over at Shelf Space this month, I'm probably not actually going to have time to get around to this in June. But the premise of this book is basically a girl who her family has magic and she has to pay a price or pass a test in order to save her family's magic and so the test that she has to pass is to um, kill her first love but the problem is that she doesn't have a first love so she has to find someone to fall in love with and then kill them um, and that that premise sounds great so I really can't wait to read this also the cover is just gorgeous I love the colors I can't wait the second new release that I am really looking forward to is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwen this just came out last month at the start of May 
but um, I had both this and Malice by him on my shelf, and I made the decision to start with Malice first because um, not only is The Faithful and the Fallen a completed series, but um, Malice was also his debut. So. I am really looking forward to this. I already know based on Malice that I've really enjoyed John Gwynn. So also look at that cover. It's a tiny, tiny little guy. That's how big that is. That's how big that dragon is. Tiny little guy. Okay, the third question in the tag is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So my obvious choice for this is going to be Jade Legacy. And I haven't actually read Jade War yet, which I'm hoping to get to very soon, but based on how much I enjoyed uh, Jade City and based on how people say that Jade War is even better, um, I just can't wait for Jade Legacy to come out. And I'm really happy that it is coming out soon because depending on when I read Jade War, the wait isn't going to be that long. Um, and obviously I'm going to be really anticipating it. So the fourth question in the tag is your biggest disappointment, which is a little bit of a downer of a question, but it's understandable that it's in here. So the first one that I talked about in a recent wrap up is going to be The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And this was only disappointing to me just because I thought I had seen so many good reviews of it, but then it turned out to be like a little bit predictable, a little bit not what I was expecting it to be. Um, and I just didn't love the execution of it and it didn't really work for me when I was hoping to really like it. And then the next one, the next disappointment, is on here for a different reason from The Midnight Library. And I know this is a little bit controversial, but this is going to be Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. And I think that the reason that Warbreaker was a disappointment to me was because of my expectations. And so I want to make it clear that I still liked Warbreaker, but it wasn't the love that I felt for Stormlight or for uh, Mistborn. And I would put probably Elantris on the same level as Warbreaker, but everybody says that Elantris is like his debut. It's not as good as the others, even though it's still good. So my expectations going into Elantris were like exactly right, whereas my expectations going into Warbreaker I don't think were, because I liked the magic system, but I didn't feel like we had enough time with the characters, with it being a standalone, for me to connect with them in the same way that I do in some of his other books. And I just wasn't as engaged as I expected to be. Like, people speak really highly of Warbreaker, and I'm glad that they love it, but the hype definitely got to me on that one. So on the other end of the spectrum, we basically have the positive version of that question, which is the biggest surprise that you've read this year. Now I have two for this one, and these both have a lot to do with my expectations as well. So the first one is going to be The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. And I, I absolutely loved The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I enjoyed it so much. Um, but one of the reasons why it was a surprise was because I feel like it's really different from Neil Gaiman's other books. I was really gripped by The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I don't know if it was the fact that it was almost like a whimsical horror story, it was told from the perspective of a child, and the feeling of wonder was there with the magic, um, but I, I don't know, but like it, I felt differently about it than I did about the other Neil Gaiman that I've read, and I absolutely loved it. And the other surprise is going to be The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter, and the reason for this is because I have sort of decided that domestic thrillers aren't for me. There are obviously some, some gems. In there and like I'm not dismissing that whole subgenre like by any means but the ones that I've read they kind of don't grip me and they do a lot of the same things with variations on a theme but The Good Daughter was so good and I think it was really the characters that put it over the top for me like I connected to them so much and that's why it worked for me and I was surprised that it worked for me because it was a book that I thought I was going to casually enjoy that I ended up just like really really loving. But the sixth question is going to be favorite new author 
or new to you? And so I am going to lean on the new to you half of this question. There's a lot that I'm catching up on now, like books that I didn't even know existed before. So the two authors that I'm going to go with for this are Robert Jordan, because I just started The Wheel of Time this year and I'm loving it. And then the second one is going to be John Gwynn, because even though I've only read Malice, um, I can tell based on like what I liked about that book and where people say this series is going that I'm really going to love him. Um, and so he's also someone that I got into for the first time just last month. Um, and they are definitely my, my favorite new, new to me authors of this year. The seventh question in the tag is your fictional crush. And I'm assuming that that means fictional crush from books that you've read in the first half of this year. Um, so the first one that, that I'm going to go with is Nick Young from Crazy Rich Asians because he's just described as like the perfect guy, essentially. He is described as like super handsome, like very smart, and the fact that he's rich doesn't even come into it. I think that the fact that he's rich but was perfectly happy to go out on his own is actually more attractive to me. The other two, I'm gonna consider one of them to be like a character that I actually have a crush on, and then the other one to be sort of like a bad decision. Um, but that's going to be Perrin and Matt from The Wheel of Time. So Perrin is the... I love Perrin, he's my favorite, and he's the one that I'm going to consider that I like actually have a crush on because he's like thoughtful and like sort of soft-spoken but very kind and like intentional in the way that he approaches things and he's he's just very like he seems very caring and he just seems to be like um he has the type of energy that i would like to surround myself with matt on the other hand is the type of character where when i say that i have a crush on him it's the type of crush where like i know that i shouldn't but i do anyway like if he was a real person, he would be the type of guy where, like, you might have a crush on him, but you know that it would be a bad decision to get involved with him in any way. Like, he's probably attractive for the wrong reasons, um, but he's still attractive. That's the problem. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on. The eighth question in the tag is your newest favorite character. Um, so I'm just going to jump off the previous question a little bit and say that Perrin is definitely one. Perrin Ibarra from The Wheel of Time. Um, I love him. I just, I love Perrin. I, I explained a little bit in the previous question. And then for my second answer to this question, I'm cheating a little bit, but not really. Um, and what I mean by that is it's going to be Vin from Mistborn, but I technically read The Final Empire last year, and she probably would have made it as a favorite even just after The Final Empire, but since I read two-thirds of the trilogy this year, um, I feel fine in saying that like she became really a new favorite character this year because... Um, what the final empire laid out the rest of the series really just solidified for me i love vin she's so badass i love to see her development she has so much trauma but like throughout the series she learns to trust she gains people into her life um i love vin she is an absolute favorite and she is one of the main reasons why i can't wait to reread mistborn the ninth question is a book that made you cry, and I really tried not to double up on books in these uh, questions, but the first one that I'm going to have for this is The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, um, and I'm obviously not going to spoil anything about Mistborn, but all I will say is I think that for those of you who have read The Hero of Ages, it's pretty evident where I would have been crying and that indeed was when I started crying. The second book that made me cry was My Dark Vanessa, and this book was a tough read, but very 
important subject matter. So essentially, My Dark Vanessa follows a girl in a split timeline. We follow her back in 2001 when she's 15 years old. She goes off to boarding school and she essentially gets involved with one of her professors. And like, I would hesitate to call it a romance because it's obviously not romantic, but like, that's what it is from her perspective as a 15 year old girl is a romance with her professor. And then in the other timeline, we follow her at 32 years old in 2017. We're following her as a fully grown woman, essentially when the reckoning of like the Me Too movement came to light and like women started coming forward with their stories and we kind of see her grappling with what happened in her past and maybe starting to realize what she didn't see back then and starting to see that relationship in a different light. It was a hard book to read. It really, really was hard. The switching gears, the tenth question in the tag is a book that made you happy. Um, and I do have a few for this as well. Um, the first one that I have, I read right around Valentine's Day because I thought it would be nice to slip a little bit of romance in there. And that was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Um, and it was honestly just like a fluffy romance. It has like a Groundhog Day theme going on where the main character is living the same day over again until she can find out what she needs to get right. Um, so I really liked that. Uh, and it was just cute. The second book for that is going to be The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I won't get into in any detail because I know that everyone talks about it, but it did put a smile on my face. It felt like a warm hug in a book, and I would definitely recommend it if that is something that you're looking for. Okay, the eleventh question in this tag is the most beautiful book that you've bought this year. And I do have two for this, and they're both sitting up top. One of them is the 75th anniversary edition of Mythology by Edith Hamilton. Um, I've just started reading this in the past week or so, but this is absolutely gorgeous. It also has artwork throughout, if I can actually find some. Like, for example, Odysseus and his encounter with the Cyclops. So that's just one example of the art, and there's definitely stuff like this throughout the whole thing. The pages are so thick and such good quality. In terms of like value for what you get in this special edition, I think that it's really great. The second one for a beautiful book that I've bought this year is going to be The Books of Earthsea, the like full collection illustrated edition by Ursula K. Le Guin, and that is going to be just because like, I love illustrated editions, and this has so much in it. Like, these end papers, this art is so cool. And just for, just as an example, it does have art like this on the pages throughout the books as well. So I'm really looking forward to reading those and, like, looking at the art. I It really adds to my personal reading experience when I have stuff like that. So absolutely love it. Um, and then the twelfth and final question in the tag is what books do you need to read by the end of this year? Just for like me personally, aside from the buddy reads, books that I need to read by the end of this year are Jade War by Fonda Lee because like I mentioned I am very much anticipating Jade Legacy and so um, obviously I need to read the second book in the series to read the third one which I'm definitely aiming to do this year. Um, and then we have the Books of Babel, which I do have Sen Lin Ascends on my shelf now, but that's also a book that has the conclusion to the series coming out later this year. Um, and so I really, if I can, want to fit all of those books in as well so that I can read that when it comes out. That was the final question in the tag, and I don't think that this is really the sort of tag that people like tag each other in because everybody has a mid-year so if you see this consider yourself tagged do it if you want to do it um, I thought that this was really fun a good way to review some of the stuff that I've read this year in a different way I enjoyed myself so I hope that you did too uh, that's gonna be it for this one thank you so much for watching like if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more from me and I hope that you're have a fa oh no <laughs> I hope that you're having a fantastic day and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye!